the problem what we are trying to solve is that how can we help people to adopt Kubernetes faster, how people are able to connect to this uh, Kubernetes cluster, how they are able to observe and have the observability over the cloud native workloads and make it so that it's frictionless and people who download and install Lens will get immediate value. Hi, this is your host of Bhartia and we are here at KubeCon and Cloud Native Con in Paris. And today we have with us once again, Mr. Kai Piainen, VP of Engineering at Mirantis. Mr. Kai, it's great to have you back on the show. Hey, thanks for having me. Of course, it's great to have you back on the show. Uh, we are, it is the second day, if I'm not wrong. Uh, when you were at the booth and when you interact with folks, what kind of audience you're seeing and what kind of discussions you're seeing? Obviously, AI has been a big topic here at the KubeCon, so, so some people want to talk about AI-related topics, but uh, specifically people coming to our booth, they, they know some of our products and, uh, and of course, uh, our Lens product is, is uh, very familiar amongst the people here at the KubeCon. So we are meeting with a lot of the end users, uh, like uh, software developers who do the cloud native software development, as well the operators who operate the Kubernetes clusters. And uh, yeah, it's, it's been very good discussions and uh, always great to hear the feedback from our users. And what kind of feedback are you getting? They pretty much, they love the product, you know, so it is very, very popular product amongst the crowd in here. Tell us what you folks announced here at the conference in terms of off course Lens. We just released a new early access version of our latest and greatest Lens desktop product. The name of the product is Lens 2024, and uh, it's massively improving the Lens product in terms of user experience, it has the built-in integration with uh, AWS, EKS clusters, being able to access those clusters easily and securely. And uh, overall, we are aiming to include as many of the user recommendations and, and feature requests into this release as possible. So this is a big, big release for us. Can you also talk about the update that you made to this release? How much was based on the feedback they received and how much was based on your either client's requirement or your own product roadmap? I would say that it's probably 50-50, you know? So there has been these very long requested features like, like can we have uh, aggregated logs uh, streaming from uh, when we are looking at our deployments, can we have the aggregated logs from all the containers that belong to that uh, deployment? So features like that, so they are all part of the product now as well as the much, much more flexibility on the time series data visualization to have ability to zoom out, you know, go look more back in the history. So these type of functionality, but then at the same time, we always, we are on a mission to remove complexity, accelerate productivity for our users. So many of the features we have been adding to the product are just based on our roadmap. Uh, to, to go towards this uh, direction. Of course, you cannot share too much what's next on the roadmap, but what are the things that you folks are working on where users say, hey, this is next in Lens? Well, obviously, we all know that AI is a quite big topic, so, you know, I don't think it's a big secret. Uh, to, we are also looking into AI and how to, how to incorporate AI uh, with Lens. Uh, as well as this um, very long requested functionality to have uh, Lens available in web browsers. So those are kind of some of the, you know, bits that we are. You have been part of uh, the community for a very really long time, you know, and then you became part of the Mirandes. How have you seen the evolution of Kubernetes itself based on the workload? Because you folks do, you cater to a lot of customers where you're seeing, hey, you know, Kubernetes as a workload itself, I mean, not workload, Kubernetes itself is evolving. I mean, to phrase it, I mean, Kubernetes is not evolving, but the workloads are, you know, new workloads are emerging, so the vendor ecosystem is evolving. How are you seeing that evolution there? Well, interestingly, so we have such a wide reach uh, with our product, so we have visibility, you know, with, with uh, amazing you know, visibility to, to all different types of workloads that are being run around the globe. For me, perhaps the most interesting part has been to learn that 
in the the kind of pre- penetration of Kubernetes, it's happening everywhere in the most weird places. So there are there might be Annie's flower shop, and for some reason Annie's flower shop is also running Kubernetes. I don't know for what, but you know it's just the bread of the users you know from different parts of the world and for different use cases that we can even it's just mind boggling you know so the adoption and also the number of users so those are the those are the things that have been kind of be very kind of inspiring to me to see and since we are talking about users customers you have a breadth of customers you know big enterprises small enterprises individuals just people who are enthusiastic uh, you folks also added a tier for lens so talk about that and who is the target for the tier yeah that's right so so we have um, lens offering is basically we have a free offering and we have also paid offering uh, for the lens product we have been very fortunate that uh, every single iconic logo on this planet they are also our paying customers and um, now we have been getting a lot of requests for features that are aimed for these larger enterprises like having ability to better manage the users who have access to the paid version so SSO SCIM enhanced security having support for virtual desktop interfaces and and so forth so this offering is now available as part of our new lens enterprise uh, product offering that we just released and announced and now it's available for general public so if you look at this offering how many tiers are there in total and so who's the target yeah we have total of three tiers so we have the lens personal that is the free of charge uh, then we have the lens pro and then we have the lens enterprise and what are the limitations or benefits of each tier so the lens personal is aimed for the smaller companies uh lens pro is truly then for the professionals who work for for the bigger companies and the enterprise then adds all the capabilities that the enterprises require now i want to also talk about the role that you see of lens in the larger kubernetes ecosystem to solve some of the pain points and problems lens is quite unique product so there is not a lot of competition uh so we are the desktop application that basically allows the user to connect to all the different places that the user has been given access by by his employer or the company you are working for so you are given access to certain places lens will utilize the access control provided for this user and doesn't require anything to be installed in in the cluster so this is not a saas offering this is the problem what we are trying to solve is that how can we help people to adopt kubernetes faster how people are able to connect to this uh, kubernetes cluster how they are able to observe and have the observability over the cloud native workloads and make it so that it's frictionless and people who download and install lens will get immediate value you know immediately once they start the software uh, so we are trying to solve the complexity issue that's the that's the big one uh, when you created lens back then you know and it got acquired the, the technology and the team got acquired and moved there how have you i mean what problem you saw back then that you wanted to solve and if that problem is still relevant or the lens has also evolved kind of funny because the product looks pretty much you know the same you know like it was like 5 years ago uh so the problem we tried to do and so back in then i would say that the core problem is still the same that we are still solving uh with every new complex technology that the, that is emerging so the biggest challenge usually for these new technologies is that how to make it more accessible and i have a little bit of experience from the past you know from technologies outside from kubernetes i was very much involved in the mesh networking uh space and in there as well it's a highly complex technology and the key in there to help with the adoption is actually to figure out the ways how you can simplify it and how you can make it so that it's more easy for humans to understand um so we did the same for kubernetes and i think we are still on the same same path since we are talking about you know making things easier of course your focus no pun intended is on lens 
but Mirantis is doing a lot of things, Cosmotron, a lot of products are there which are aimed at, you know, k zeros is there. So a lot of focus is also making things easier and simpler. So can you also talk about when you look at Mirantis overall, yeah. how it's making through all these products, projects, things easier to, if you cannot reduce the complexity, at least make it easier for customers to deal with it. Yeah, so there are, there are basically two sides. So how we like to look at the world is that, uh, that the same set of technology, we need to look at it from the point of view of the people who actually deploy and you know create this infrastructure, and then there is actually the consumers for this infrastructure, and uh, and like the products like you mentioned, the K zeros Cosmotron, try to make the the life for the infra operations people easy to to roll out the you know the fabric of Kubernetes basically everywhere, and. Uh, then the lens basically piece is solving the part that how how to make it accessible actually for the consumers of the of this complex infrastructure so that we will get the kind of benefit from not just by making an investment in the infrastructure but also reaping the benefits from the investment by making it easier for your developers to to utilize that infra so so I think all of these products we are creating, they very much support each other and create this kind of one beautiful experience uh, for no matter if you are an operator or if you are um, a consumer of this infra. Miska, once again, thank you so much for taking time out today and, and talk about, of course, Lens, Cosmotron, and all those other projects, also the importance of Lens and Mirantis in this ecosystem. Thanks for great insight, and as usual, I look forward to talking to you again soon. Thank you. Thanks. It was a pleasure.